Hi and welcome back. See that wasn't too bad. You probably could have fast forwarded through that piece after about uh, 10 seconds or so, but you get how the course player works. So use it to your benefit. So now let's dig in. This segment is on how does electricity get to my house or my business? Something that um, baseline you have to understand and it really helps the accounting. You know, I'm always amazed. Um, I, I started off my career as an auditor and you can be an auditor and audit things and really not know how the business works. So, you, you know, you come out of school, you're kind of green and you're auditing cash, you're auditing receivables, things like that, inventory. You really don't have to understand the production process and what comes out, out the uh, um, back end of the process until several years into your career. So I always like to instruct people with, here's the business, here's how it works. So the story of the electric business, and, and again, people say, hey, I, I work in electric utility, that's my job. I do accounting in electric utility. Well, really, your job is much bigger than that. When you think of what electricity does for society, and we talked about that in the last, last segment, but really, um, the way the business works is that you generate electricity through a, a number of means, uh, fossil fuels, renewable energy, hydroelectric, nuclear, and so on. And uh, you take that electricity and you transport it over long distances using what we call transmission planted service. And you have substations along the way that drop the voltage down from where it was produced so it's more usable as you go. And you transport it over those long distances uh, with those high transmission towers at a higher voltage because you have less losses due to friction. You lose electricity as you go because heat um, uses up some of it. But then you get to the business end of it. So you get to what we call a distribution utility. The distribution utility steps the voltage down and then distributes it, distributes it rather to end users. So your, your homes, your schools, your hospitals, your donut factories, your manufacturers, your retail establishments, you drop that voltage down to 120 volts and you use uh, services, we call them services, to get the electricity to the end user. And so from start to finish, there's an accounting process in, plate, in place. There's expenses, there's fixed assets, um, there's billings to customers, things like that. So it's all pretty integral. And it's like any other manufacturing process as well because you manufacture electricity and you deliver electricity. You can see the process here in this diagram as well. So power plant, switchyard substation, transmission lines, another step down uh, substation rather, down to distribution level, down to the pole that's outside your house, or perhaps you have underground power uh, lines as well. Um, and then that transformer steps it down into that service drop and it ends up in your home or business or, or uh, for the end user. So each one of those steps along the way is very capital intensive and the main level of financing that utilities use is long-term debt. So the, the types of debt that we use are, are revenue bonds and those revenue bonds have to be um, paid back through customer rates or things that we call infrastructure charges or you know sometimes you use short-term loans or public-private partnerships or grants in any case there's a payment mechanism and a borrowing mechanism to fund the long-term infrastructure and then to get repaid through customer rates so it's an integral part of the business so we'll discuss that in later sections as we step up our analysis of the FERC uniform system of accounts when you think of the type of electricity infrastructure that is out there, we have uh, nuclear power, hydropower, renewable energy, more renewable energy, solar farms, and so on. There are transmission assets. Uh, there's a pole with a transformer on it. Here are customer meters and uh, end user customers as well, and equipment and the utility buildings, all of that. So it all fits in. Again, it drives a lot of dollars. Uh, our business and in the electric business is highly dependent on debt and we use that debt to fund that infrastructure and our customers pay that back through their rates. So just to give you an overview of the industry of a, as, a, as a whole, so the what I like to call the uh, utility of today 
And the utility of today is this. We use these types of power resources on your left hand uh, piece of the screen there. So hydro facilities, fossil fuels, nuclear, but we're using more and more renewable energy. So wind power facilities, uh, solar power and so on. And the piece that we're missing right now to make some of this uh, left hand power supply resources and fossil fuel is battery storage. So battery storage is becoming more prevalent and more efficient, but it still is not enough to store the renewable energy that's generated during the day for use at night. So we still need these facilities and so on. So the business is changing in regards to that. As we build more batteries, bigger batteries, we'll be able to use less fossil fuels, but it's a process that's going to take some time. So we contrast that with, with what I like to call the utility of the future. And the utility of the future We'll have a combination of customers that are fully reliant on the utility for all their electrical needs and others that can generate their own electricity, say, during the day using renewable energy, thinking of uh, homes with solar panels on top, uh, thinking of uh, industries and hospitals perhaps that have solar facilities or wind power and so on, but they still have a reliance on the electric utility for part of their electrical needs. And we call those customers the microgrid. The microgrid can be connected to the utility, then disconnect when they don't need them, and so on. And as you'll see as we go through the accounting piece why this is important, because it re relates to uh, power supply planning and rates to customers and things like that. So you can see the complexity of the business where we have extra facilities now, more facilities to generate electricity than we really need, and we're moving to eliminate those. On the other hand, our customers may or may not need us as um, electrical providers, depending on their own reliance on their solar or wind facilities. And the key and linchpin to all of this is the battery. So we'll dig into more of these. I just wanted to give a high level overview before we get into the nuts and bolts of how this works. But keep in mind accounting um, rules, not rules, but accounting is throughout this whole process on how we account for every piece and part because remember what we spend we have to recover from customers in our rates and finally like any industry the electric industry runs on a, a lingo on uh, acronyms and cryptic terms and i like to call this how do you speak electric you can almost make kind of a rap song out of this when you're talking to somebody you go you know FERC and NERC and CERC and nukes and ecar sip and ohm and do Kind of like that. You can have a conversation with somebody, use some of these terms, and um, you know, have an understandable conversation, which will sound like a foreign language to an outsider standing close by. But in any, in any case, somewhere along the way, we will touch on some of these terms. Uh, we'll be sure to give you definitions along the way. But just like any other business, uh, you'll you'll learn how to speak the business of the electric business. Okay. So our key takeaways from this segment here is this. Electricity is vital to a functioning society and economic growth. And the infrastructure that we build to serve our customers is financed with long-term debt that has to be repaid by customers. Also, electric customers pay for their current use of the electric system via their current electric rates, which makes it important that accounting captures all of our costs of operations and delivery to the end user customers. So they pay for the use of the infrastructure, the electricity that's generated, all the support functions, and uh, all the costs that go into running the business. And as we talked about the utility of today and the utility of tomorrow, the electric industry is undergoing a rapid degree of change, but accounting um, you know, s still is a bedrock of all of that. And finally, it's not too hard to learn how to speak electric. So you'll learn it as we go here. So our next topic is, is electric industry accounting different from other industries or is it really that specialized? Well, we have debits, we have credits, we have financial statements, well, we have the uh, cost of goods sold, manufacturing electricity. We'll find out, check it out. We'll see you back in a minute.